We've um, thought about mission in quite broad terms, Jesus' <coughs> mission and our mission. And now I want to move on to um, being more practical, really. When I was at Bible College about 12 years ago, training to be a minister, my tutor, Glenn Marshall, used to encourage us as students to always ask, why be H? He said, after you've um, prepared a talk or a sermon and you're thinking about delivering it, ask the question, why be H? Really important question, which is yes, but how? Because it's all right telling people stuff and sharing stuff, but how do we then live it out? When we've read or learned something from a Bible passage or we've listened to somebody teaching, we then always need to think, yeah, but how am I going to live this out? Our faith is such a practical faith. It's not about head knowledge. It's not about theology, thinking about God all the time. It's about walking it out with Jesus. So the next two sessions today and then on Sunday morning, um, I'd like us to think about living out our mission. And this session, we're going to focus on your kingdom come. And it's a different format for this session. It's a format that I use quite regularly when I was in ministry at Daybrook Baptist Church. And it's a format I've sort of adapted and we use at the Bridge Baptist Church. I run a prayer event once a month, a prayer afternoon. Um, it's about exploring together um, it's about exploring together um, a Bible verse or passage um, or a theme and then using a variety of ways to help us encounter God. And it takes into, the fact, into consideration that we're all different. I don't know whether you recognise yourself. <laughs> Nobody's wearing a tie, so... Uh, we're at different stages in our faith journey and we all encounter and experience Jesus in different ways and some ways we find more helpful than others. So I want to use this format as we reflect and as we pray, your kingdom come. It's quite straightforward. I'm going to read a Bible passage and I'll share a few thoughts about it. I'll ask a couple of questions and then we will explore the Bible passage in ways that help us go on listening to God and responding to him. We listen and learn in different ways, so I've set up four areas for us and we can choose one of these. So there's a, a quiet zone for those people who learn best by reflecting. Uh, this is the zone I would always go to, but normally I'm leading one of the other zones. So this zone is um, end of the corridor, turn right, and then just keep walking until you hit room 12, right at the bottom of the far cor corridor. Um, and really it's for those who want some quiet, who want to reflect. I've got some photographs on the tables, I've got some, uh, something to guide your thoughts. Um, but I would ask that if you go into that room, um, if there's more than just you in that room, then please just keep silence. No sort of chatting. Uh, everything's written down on the table, the photographs are there, you'll understand what you need to do if you want to take part in that activity. Then there's uh, a listening area, and I am going to be in that zone, for those who learn by hearing. Um, I'm going to give some short reflections on the Bible passage that I'm going to read, and that's in room eight. So again, right down to the bottom of the corridor, turn right, and then room eight is, is further along, but I'll, I'll guide folks, don't worry. Um, then we've got a creative zone, for those who learn by doing, um, and that's, I've set that up over behind you over there. Um, and there are two activities, there's mindful colouring on our theme, praying as you colour, as you connect with Jesus, and then there's also cards for a personal uh, creative activity. You don't have to be good at drawing or anything. You can just um, you can use the activity in a way that you, you find helpful. And then the last area is the chat zone, 
which is for those who learn by thinking aloud and discussing things. Um, so Dave has kindly, my husband Dave has kindly agreed to host that, um, and that's looking at the passage and responding to some questions and chatting. And we think that's going to also be down along and down in the corridor on some comfy seats, um, past where Paul is working with a, a small group. Okay. Um, and then after we've explored together, we'll gather back and there's opportunity for us to share and give thanks. Anything that we sense God has been saying to us or whispering to us, prompting us about. Um, there's opportunity for anyone to share, but nobody has to. So don't go to your area and think, oh, I need to find something to share. Don't worry about that at all. If something comes and you want to share later, that's great. If not, that's fine. Um, and then we'll close just with uh, a song after we've prayed. There are two clear aims for me for this session. Um, and this is what I used to say when I, I led it at Daybrook. This way of worshipping together builds community. Um, and ideally, it, it's a good idea for a church weekend away because it's about being together and learning and sharing and exploring God's word together. And then the second aim uh, is that we encounter Jesus in the way that we, um, we work in the various zones, that we might hear his voice. So the Bible passage, very, very familiar from Matthew chapter 6, 9 to 13. I'm going to read that. This is Jesus teaching his early followers how to pray. And he says, I want you to pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And my Bible notes say that some later manuscripts also have the words, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Jesus wants us to <coughs> pray. And in this prayer, we hear that he wants us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's a request that we're making to God. It's an invitation, a longing that God's reign will come. Remember, we're not praying for the kingdom to come into existence. It's come, it's here and now. We're praying for it to permeate and invade all those areas where it's excluded. And we know that wherever and whenever God reigns, his kingdom is present and there's potential for shalom. And that's about wholeness and well-being in our minds, our bodies, our relationships. Um, it's about wellness in communities and the environment. Uh, it's that flourishing of all things under God's reign. Your kingdom come, but what do we really expect from that prayer? You already know that this is a passage that Jesus, a prayer that Jesus gave us, and it's a pattern for prayer, you probably know that. A group of six topics to be followed under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' day, that would have been entirely in keeping with the way rabbis taught Jesus was a rabbi, he had disciples, and he would have taught them by giving them topics of truth and then going back and explaining how they were to live out and work out those topics. And that's what the Lord's Prayer is. It was never meant to be said straight through rote. It's a pattern prayer with guiding topics for us to pray. Uh, the topic of praying for God's kingdom to come leads us to pray for ourselves, to pray for our church, our community, our nation and the world. Um, our mission, we know, must be fueled by our prayers. Prayers of longing and hope and trust that God is at work, um, that his kingdom has come and is coming. 
When we pray your kingdom come, we can only pray it as we are. So we might bring our own struggles, our own doubts, our own fears. Uh, we might bring our own faith and our own hope as well. We pray your kingdom come and then we live it out. So these are the questions that I would like us to explore together. Um, and in your various zones, the questions are, will be written on cards or they'll be, you'll be reminded of them. Your kingdom come. What do we expect from this prayer? And in what ways are we praying and living out this prayer? So I'd encourage you to keep these questions in mind, but you don't have to stick to them if you feel God is prompting you in a different direction uh, to focus on his kingdom. So just a brief recap, because you probably won't have um, worshipped in this way before. There's a chat zone, which we're going to keep silent for those who learn by uh, just reflecting. There's the listening zone, which I will lead in one of the rooms down at the bottom. The creative zones in here, you'll need to take your own chair over there, there's activities to do. And the chat zone, which um, Dave will be leading. And if several people want to go to that, Alison said that she would always lead a group. Um, any questions for clarity, or do you all know what we're doing? Okay, yes. The listening zone is uh, down the corridor, uh, out here, past the coffees to the end, then turn right and it's down that corridor, but I'll go down there. I, I might take a moment to arrive just to make sure other people know what they're doing. <laughs> Are we good with that? So I think what we'll do is we'll probably have about 20 minutes in those groups. Um, and then I'll call us back together. So stay in your area for about 20 minutes, but I'll come and give you a shout when we're, we're ready to gather back. And then there'll be an opportunity to share and pray if we want to. Okay. Thank you.